I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Wonder Boy: The Dragon's Trap. This is the new remake by Lizard Cube, and oh, it spoiled it. But one of my favorite features they added was um, there's now Wonder Girl, and you can change the main menu to be Wonder Girl instead of Wonder Boy. I just thought that was a really cute touch. Um, you don't actually spend most of the game, spoilers, as the human character, but it's still a really cool touch. Uh, so one of the features is, you know what, I'll actually get to the game before I show you that. Uh, let's start a new file. Um, so this is a remake of an old Sega Mag uh, Master Drive system, I think. Um, originally 8-bit, and uh, it was a pretty, it was a cult hit, I guess, I would approximate in terms of size. And um, the gameplay is all like, pixel-perfect identical to what it was, with a few minor changes. Um, so it plays just like the original, but with absolutely beautiful uh, added visuals. And like you kind of saw there, you can actually switch between 8-bit and the current graphics at any time, and the retro and new soundtracks. It's really freaking cool. So this ends at the... This is actually the direct sequel to the prior um, Wonder Boy game, which I forget which one it is, actually. So, what's the deal with this retro graphics thing? Oh, you can you can press a little button and oh, it switches the music. Well, that's cool, but that's nothing really that special. So what else do we got? Oh, yes. This is freaking magic. They also added, um, this is a totally new sprite added for the, um, this is just what the game originally looked like. This is, like, complete perfect restoration. Um, but they added a new sprite for Wonder Girl, which is awesome. So, the reason the gameplay might feel a little like it's, you know, an 8-bit game is because it is an 8-bit game. It's, um, amazingly faithful port. Um, I happen to play the, the, uh, TurboGrafx version, but, uh... Trust me, it is uh, pretty much perfect as, as can be, gameplay-wise. I think I want to go this way. Yeah, there we go. It opens with a bit of a Bowser's Castle and SMB1 sort of maze where you... I think it plays a little ding sound if you get the path wrong. But you might not have heard it with me talking the entire way. But yeah, I, I really love the, uh, the graphics option. I think, is this the sequel to Wonder Boy and Monster World? The... Wait, no, that can't be, because that was on a Genesis. The, I, th I think I played Monster Boy 3. But yeah, that also ended with a Mecha Dragon, so I guess the game's just really like Mega Dra Mecha Dragons? I don't know. Yeah, being the first boss, he's not too hard. So let's just beat him. Ow. Uh, beat him up. Also, a common trick on 8-bit systems was to make the boss, um part of the background layer and then they would the boss arenas would just be all black because there wasn't actually a background layer Oop. Uh, fun little trick here you can dodge the little curse that he's trying to give to us to get some more money and uh, it doesn't really matter so much since we're just getting one coin so I'll just get cursed here right, curse me you jerk there you go <laughs> see it now we are lizard person not quite as good as bird person but you know All oh, right, graphics. You know, minor differences. Minor differences. I just, I love that you can do that at any time. Gr the sound too. Oh, I think they actually added a new sound option. Ooh, is that the FM Towns? I kind of like that one. It's kind of funky. But yeah, you can choose whether you want. Um, scan lines. I don't like my scan lines too heavy. I was never very nostalgic for scan lines, but I think a nice, I think the 50 doesn't look too bad. Um, it has sort of the monitor, you know, the CRT glow. You gotta have some glow there. Um, this is closer to what I heard. I heard the PC, or, uh, yeah, the PC engine, the turbo graphics. Oh, you could also individually toggle the sound effects and music. If you do, um, see so what you do to change it in gameplay is, um, RT. This is the PS4 version, by the way. Uh, it's coming to PC, I think, a little later. Uh, I think it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Switch? 
Is, uh, is Switch happening? I forget if Switch is happening. I don't have a Switch, so I didn't really investigate that too far. Uh, someday. But yeah. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, the, if you switch, you can switch with the right, um, click in the right stick for the retro sounds, R2 for the, uh, retro visuals, and the, the visuals are really great, but it's still really cool to be able to switch back to it, and, um, it's this kind of cool thing where it's a mix of, it's pretty nostalgic to go back and, you know, be able to experience, you know, hey, I remember this, but now it looks like this. Um, and also, if you haven't played it, it, it can be pretty cool to just be like, oh, this used to look like this, huh? But yeah, um... <laughs> this is what this used to look like. And the, the art, the new art is so beautiful, and there's, it's so charming. Um, you'll see a bit more later. I have beaten this game. I beat this game on Turbo Graphics, and I beat this game, I beat this version. Um, can confirm, gameplay-wise, 99% identical to the original. It's incredibly faithful. Um, you can even load, I was really surprised by this, you'll see in a second, but you can actually load passwords from the original game, because it was one of those old 8-bit games that was before saves were like a common thing. Um, <laughs> that, that is so cool that not... They didn't just add her as a character, but they let you switch it, so it's, you know, it's not Wonder Boy, it's Wonder Girl. Anyway, this is one of my favorite... Uh, <laughs> wow, with a face like yours, I'd be looking for an antidote right now. <laughs> this is amazing. This this freaking pirate space pig man is the shopkeep for some reason, the original game. So they kept him, and he has so much personality, and you'll see this with a lot of the, the new designs. They, they keep just, like, things you can barely notice in the pixel art. And they just give so much personality to it. But, so this is the password screen. Um, I've been hitting this, these ancestral codes out for decades now. He sure has. Write them down carefully. So if you have a code, um, if you have this game for Sega Master System, you can write down your code, plop it into this game, and you can continue your game, like, 20 years later. It's amazing. Um, and even the old, like, the ones that are basically cheat codes for the game, like, there's one that actually lets you be human, like, the human form, um, early. And you can put that in this game. And you can even keep the human form. Um, I don't know, I don't remember if that was actually a thing in the original one. Oh. Didn't actually want to do that. <laughs> but I just... <laughs> That is, this this will never not be cool. I've played the whole game like this, and I still found myself switching. It's it's so cool. Um, also, there's even parallax layers. I guess, I mean, that's not too impressive sounding, but... Oh, right. That's important. So this game is... How would I describe it? It's a little bit like Zelda 2, but without experience. You can buy equipment. Well, I guess you couldn't buy equipment in Zelda 2. Um... It's got some RPG elements, but not quite. Like, you can upgrade your health, you can get more, um, more money and stuff. But it's not really an action RPG. It's, you know, it's a combat platformer. And it's a little difficult. It's not too bad considering the, the um... So they didn't keep the old save system entirely intact. Basically, you can, um... I think there's goodies down here. Hold on. This game has... It's definitely an epic game because it has so many hidden secrets and stuff. Um, and... Oh. I think I, I messed it. I think you have to fall to the left there. There's lots of little secrets around. Um, very... Interesting for its time. It has lots of really interesting stuff. Like, this game has a charisma system for what items you can buy. Like, um, Ugly Scale Face here. Uh, can buy a lot less cool stuff than, like, a handsome, say, lion person. Um, <laughs> water graphics hasn't ch haven't changed much at all, have they? Did I leave? The, the sound effects are the one thing. It's actually hard. Alright, I had them both on. I like them both. I like both the retro and new soundtracks, so I just kind of toggle those at random. But... You can tell the uh, sound effects, especially the coin dropping one. That was that's pretty iconic for the game. Um, they kept that a bit close, even with the. Oh wait, I was gonna get the thing. Oh, 
Look at his freaking sprite. It's so good. So adding Hugh Girl wasn't really too, like, taxing for them, sure, because, like, you know, each form just has, you know, relatively few um, sprites, and the animal forms, I don't think, change at all. Um, because, I mean, you're, you're lizard. Your, your gender is lizard. Um, so, yeah. I thought you could get over there, but I guess... I guess I need something... We'll get... It, it's got... I hate to abuse the term Metroidvania, but there's a little bit of backtracking and we get power-ups. Um, we get different animal forms and you, uh, You'll be able to re-explore areas more. It's kind of like... It's a little like, uh, that Shantae game. Um, I don't know why I did that. Um, oh no. That's bad. Um... Oh right, We've, we fell the safest place, so it's okay. Uh, which Shantae was it? I always get the names mixed up. I want to say Risky's Revenge, the one that was on iPad. I played my first Shantae game I played on freaking iPad, and it wasn't really that bad. I would rather play it on Steam nowadays, but uh, it wasn't on Steam back then. I, I love the... they added a lot to the backgrounds. Obviously the backgrounds, not a strong point of 8-bit systems. Uh, by the way, I always thought the, ape, the Master System looked a bit too good to be on par with uh, with the NES. Maybe it's the colors? I just think it uses colors better somehow. Because the NES kind of has this this stank to it. I don't, I don't like the look of an NES game. I like certain NES games. No. Certain NES games I do like, like um, Kirby's, Kirby's Adventure, obviously. SMB3. Cross-dress like a goblin, no questions asked. Furry edges, acquired taste. Two genders, goblin and dragon. I guess technically lizard. This is lizard. Lizards can breathe fire, it's normal. It's fine. I just need a little bit more money. I want that goblin mail, actually. Also, these items you can use to, like, attack stuff, but... Uh oh we're gonna die. Yeah, we, we dead. Uh, we, right, we start off with one of those health potions. Those are basically an, an extra... part of an extra life. They only heal like four hearts, I think, or something. At least, I think it's less than full. But yeah, pretty much all, if you play the original, um, it'll play very familiar, and... Um, yeah, so the gameplay... Alright, I think we have enough, right? I think it was like 180. Um, I freaking love the background, so good. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a weird feeling to play something. <laughs> uh, all right, how do I even triangle? So we have an inventory thing, and I think I forget how the inventory worked in the original version, but you can switch between these easier here. The OP one is the. Um, okay, we need that. Oh right, we need that for back in town. Um, if you can get the boomerang, it's really OP because it actually comes back to you. All the other items are consumable and aren't really that great, considering they're fairly rare and uh, they disappear when you die. It's uh, kind of a strange system, honestly. Um, I should probably just kill up. Oh, nope. <laughs> yeah, this is. It's an 8 bit game, so you can kind of expect to die a lot. You play this little roulette thing when you die, and if you get an elixir, you just start over with an elixir. It doesn't revive you on the spot. That would be a bit cheap. Um, like I forgot to explain earlier, so if you if you played this game before, or if you find 8-bit games a bit too hard for your taste, this game has you covered either way, because it added an easy mode, which I think gives you more potions or something. And um, I didn't try the easy mode, because I already beat the game. Uh, but uh, it's also got a hard mode where I think you take more damage, enemies take less damage, I think. And you also have like a time limit where like this thing counts down and you take damage every so many seconds. I yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, I should have shown you. Um, you look funny. First shot is on me. I love the <laughs> conversion of the characters. Look at the poor crab. That's probably our fault, isn't it? He'll be fine. Just stick him with that big needle. He'll be fine. 
But, uh, oh yeah, I have to show you the shop. The shop was one of my favorite changes. Uh, or not changes. The fact that it isn't changed is the coolest part. So this is what the retro shop looked like. And it's got this delightful English shopping, please. And um, guess what? He's got a little sign that says shopping, please. It's so freaking perfect. But I just love that they, they brought this ridiculous th thing. And he just looks so natural and beautiful. Look at him. He's got a freaking sailor tattoo. He just... <laughs> I really love the uh, the art style they went with. It, it feels extremely faithful and also a bit fresh, and uh, it just works extremely well. Um, so I, I had a blast replaying this whole thing. I wanted to make sure I could do it. I didn't want to get stuck, because, uh, you know, it, it's not really on the hardest of, like, for an 8-bit game, I guess it's not really crazy hard. It's not Nintendo hard, like one might say, but uh, it's definitely a little harder than most stuff you would find these days. As far as uh, 2D platformers, it plays a little... You know, the gameplay engine is still inherently 8-bit. It it'll feel a little stiff, maybe. But it it's all designed around the 8-bitness. Uh, the 8 so, I mean, it doesn't... It doesn't feel like a poorly designed, you know, modern game that has stiff controls. It just feels like a well-designed old game that just, you know, inherently had a little bit of that stiffness. But it doesn't really feel... It doesn't feel bad. Like, I find, I personally, I don't like a lot of NES games, like I said. I don't really have too much problem with this in terms of, um, like, weird collision detection issues, in terms of sluggish controls. It, it feels really good. I love that they adapted this weird sprite where he, like, floops up. And they also managed to add just enough of a tween frame in there. Even though the action is, like... I really appreciate when, it, if you're actually animating something, it can actually be incredibly hard to, you know, make an animation that's not too slow. Because, I mean, look at this. This this is a one-frame action. Ducking is a one-frame action. So you have to be able to spit fire. So what they do is when you duck, it's like a two-frame animation, right? Uh, but it has just enough information to feel that tail flipping up. He, you get the feel of ducking. But if you duck and fire on the same frame, you're already firing. You know, it's, an, it's a perfect animation cancel. And it, it's pretty impressive to even be able to work some of this more fluid animation into, you know, look at our amazing three cycle, you know, three frame walk cycle. <laughs> you know, they give it just a, just a bit improved here. But they also don't have like excessive animation frames that you know slow down combat and stuff. If I recall, yeah, there's a secret over here. Let's go taste that old music. Mm. Not as enamored with this particular retro track. Also, the sky is purple for reasons. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> minor graphic upgrade. Lots of hidden secrets. Uh, this one I believe is a one-up, or a part. <laughs> also, I really like, uh, oh, we are not in a treasure room. There's some other treasure, oop, excuse you. Also, the those guys changed quite a bit. I like their new form, but uh, that's probably one of the more drastic uh, visual changes. The snakes. Um, oh, let me show you the snake. The, the they converted the expressions really well uh, from the 8-bit. Also, climbing this pyramid is one of my least favorite parts of this game. It's just really slow and boring. Oh, that freaking sun, and it's it's not even there. They they did such a good job of adding personality where uh, you know the original was a little bare, but it was also a little you know it was what they could do. So anyway, wait, I'm stupid, hold on. <laughs> I wanted to go down there. I wanted to stay down there. <laughs> and the, uh, it's a pretty impressive job, I think, to, uh, it kind of has that feel of the, the sharp animations, the, uh, <laughs> I, I'm just, I really love the fact that it, like, you can do this. It's not like even just an instant full screen thing. It just feels so good. Oh, is there a secret? No. That was just a little slide animation. 
Which is another feature, or another animation that does not exist at all in 8-bit. I really love that how they fa they managed to add so much personality without, you know, messing with the gameplay at all. And a lot of... That's kind of a problem some animators have. They, they go a little bit crazy with the... Uh, I'm sorry, looking for secrets. Um, go a little bit overboard with, you know, flowery animations, and that kind of affects the gameplay a bit. <laughs> yes, I have bandages. We have lots of mummies here. <laughs> Please get hurt and come back soon. And yeah, they... <laughs> There's no... The the dialogue is all added for the shops. It's, uh, it's a nice touch. Right, I knew there was one secret. Alright. We have to get that one because it's a key. <laughs> Alright, and there's area names too now. They... Uh, Absolutely fantastic 2D art on uh, on everything in this game. I, I keep I keep meaning to show you the in the original game the the bosses just had or the enemies have these great defeated faces and uh, they translated really well to the new art style. They did a really good job. They just look so upset at their loss. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not necessarily flipping just to do so. I found myself doing that a lot in my own playthrough, just to play it. Um, it's just a really cool feature. This is kind of like, I don't even know what to call this exactly. Like, it's a remake, but the gameplay is the same. But the graphics are like, you know, the graphics are definitely remake quality. And remake, you know, severity. But it's also... I don't know. There's so many different variations on how you can remake and remaster a game. There's... It sometimes feels like, ow. Um, hold on, can we farm that? Oh! <laughs> nope, we can't. Okay. Frick. Well, I'm in bad shape. Give me a heart, please. That was not a heart. Okay, we're not in the best shape for the... <laughs> for the dragon. Oh, hey, please. Hearts, please. Alright. Aw, oh, frickin'! Rude! So yeah, this game likes its invisible puzzles, and I like that the the, uh, the new graphics kind of give you a bit of a hint to this one. Or just kind of give it some internal consistency, whereas the original is just, you know, invisible walls. Uh, I think I have all my best stuff. Let's see how this goes. Probably not super well. Mummy dragon. Ah, oh, frick. So the bosses... <laughs> also, that was an odd thing about how the gameplay works in this game. Is this... Ow. You kind of bounce around after you've been hit. Okay, so every, every dragon has kind of its... Ow. Yep, dead. Every dragon kind of has its... I should save the talking for not in a boss fight moments. Uh-oh. Yeah, every boss kind of has its pattern you need to learn. And for this one, you need to wait until it goes all the way down when you're not being stupid, and then you can get three hits off of it. A lot of their patterns require being patient, which... Obviously, I'm not particularly good at it. Also, once again, the change in the background. Fantastic stuff. Also, I do find um, the hitboxes might make a teeny bit more sense if you turn on the retro graphics. Generally, I don't find myself being like, oh no, what was that? But, you know, maybe it's just having played it. Well, I played it slightly different. The Turbo Graphics actually has, because the Turbo Graphics is 16 bit, the Turbo Graphics has new graphics that actually look worse. Um, it's kind of, it's more of an art style difference than anything, but, uh, oops. And now we are mouse person, which, arguably the worst person. They are, um, yeah. You stick on little things, 
like the ceiling um, you stick on these blocks in particular which is why those blocks might have looked a little weird compared to all of the other graphics but they wanted to make it super clear that oh god um <laughs> that uh, oh wait what am i painting from before i have full health again yeah they wanted to make it very clear that um you know what was going on gameplay wise See, now we can go through this secret little thing. <laughs> oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to turn the, the stuff back to modern. But, I mean, both tracks are good. Let's see what we got here. Dragon shield, a or dancing shield, nice fit for rodents. So yeah, that's specifically for this form, so I think I'll just get that, because I don't have a good shield anyway. <laughs> also... It's something fun in the- oh wait, I'm not sure you can notice it in this form. I, I guess you can't. But yeah, these, uh, you have this really weird shape in here, and they actually preserved it really well, and uh, if you can fly, you can actually notice that those bumps at the top are still there, even though they're not visible in the, the art. Uh, just because they had to keep everything, or they wanted to keep everything 100% the same, which is pretty impressive stuff. Anyway, I think next time we shall explore the world as Mouse Person. Let's see what she has to say about Mouse Person. Let me take care of your tiny wounds. My tiny wounds are so expensive, though. We never got our free heal. But yeah, now that we can do this, we can yeah, we can go up here. See so yeah, next time to adventure.